Can we start with a prayer? Shall we start with a prayer? Okay, okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Saint Joseph, Saint um, Maria Goretti, Saint Raphael the Archangel, and Saint John Paul II. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I might go back to the first one there, okay? So the, the talk uh, tonight is called Sense and Sensibility, uh, one of Jane Austen's great novels um, of six that are, I suppose, uh, uh, more well known. Uh, and uh, I put down Jane Austen's tale of, of, of two loves. Okay, so we'll see what that means, okay? So the characters, um, the heroines, if you want to call that, in, in the novel, are two sisters, or the main characters are two sisters, Eleanor, uh, 19, okay, and her younger sister, uh, Marianne, we'll meet in, in a minute, uh, 16, okay. Uh, they have different personalities. They're alike in some ways, but they diverge in other ways. And that's what's interesting, you know, it's the divergence that's kind of interesting about it, and, and, and being human, that would, whatever, okay. So this is a kind of a, a character description of Eleanor, okay, she's played by Emma Thompson in, in the great movie about this, okay. Eleanor, this eldest daughter, whose advice was so effectual, possessed a strength of understanding and coolness of judgment, which qualified her, though only 19, to be the counsellor of her mother, and enabled her frequently to counteract, to the advantage of them all, that eagerness of mind in Mrs. Dashwood, her mother, which must generally have led to imprudence. Okay, so she's a mother to her mother, even at 19, okay? She's more cool, qualified, reserved in a sense, okay? Uh, she had an excellent heart. Her disposition was affectionate. And her feelings were strong, but she knew how to govern them. It was a knowledge which her mother had yet to learn and which one of her sisters had resolved never to be taught. Um, I think this is a little, well, you know, again, that's more about her, okay? She's more rounded than we think, okay? Uh, she's both, she's both head and heart, uh, but through the novel and through the film especially, she's very much head, <laughs> okay? She hides the heart. She governs the heart. She has great self-control, uh, you could say. Uh, she can be, appear quite stoic, she doesn't reveal her feelings, okay? You don't see her heart, okay? Um, and this is, I think, more a comment of, of Jane Austen's. It isn't what we say or think that defines us, but what we do, okay? So what, what forges our character, what makes us the persons that we are, uh, what we do, our actions, okay? Just, again. Okay, so the other sister, uh, I say Marianne's joie de vivre, her, her joy in living, at 16, uh, Kate Winslet, okay, was the actress who played in, 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 the, in the film. So Marianne's abilities were, in many respects, quite equal to Eleanor's. Uh, she was sensible and clever, but eager in everything. Her sorrows, her joys could have no moderation. She was generous, amiable, interesting. She was everything but prudent. Uh, the resemblance between her and her mother was strikingly great. Okay, and see, the divergence. <laughs> okay, she is sensible, she's clever, she's probably pretty as well, and uh, she has the, 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 the traits and the abilities of, Mary, of, of her sister, but she's a bit more, what shall we say, uh, uh, enthusiastic, <laughs> okay? <laughs> a bit more emotional we could say, okay, uh, and, and that has consequences, okay. Uh, uh, Jane Austen herself, I think this may be in the novel, or maybe a, a comment of Jane Austen herself, she says, Marianne, with excellent abilities and an excellent disposition, was neither reasonable 
nor candid. I think she means open here. I think open, what she means. Okay, okay. Okay, so Marianne, uh, throughout the novel, she represents, at least one interpretation of the novel, she represents sensibility, emotion, passion, drive, okay? Um, so what is sensibility? Uh, well, this is, I'm, I'm taking this from a priest. Uh, who, uh, I found his article good on this, okay? Father Michael Renier. He says, sensibility is the whisper in your ear to follow your heart. Find joy in the physical sense and feel deeply. Okay, it's the anthem of the modern world. <laughs> okay, it's the anthem of contemporary culture. Okay, um, and lots of things play on that. Okay, so sensibility uh, is swayed by what it sees, but the eye can deceive and emotions, they, they wax and wane, okay, he says, okay. So Marianne, she kind of falls headlong for Mr. Willoughby. He's very dashing. He's very charming. He's very handsome. He's um, everything she looked for. He's the perfect match, okay. He's the perfect character, uh, it seems. But we don't know a great deal about him, okay? That's, that, that's one thing we get to know, okay? So this is what, this is Marianne, her reaction to when Willoughby, Mr. Willoughby was present, okay? When he was present, she had no eyes for anyone else. Everything he did was right. Everything he, he said was clever. Okay, so she's a bit caught up. Okay, a bit trapped in this kind of vision of, of, of Miss, Mr. Mr. Willoughby, okay? And he also, he is quite charming. Uh, he knew how to play it up a bit. Uh, I think the time he brings her in from the rain and he, he, she hurt her foot and he, he carries her uh, back. Uh, he then made a kind of a, an exit. He said, he then departed to make himself still more interesting, okay, in the midst of a heavy rain. Okay, so he's, he's, uh, he doesn't know how to play it up as well, <laughs> okay? A mystique, a charm, a, a personality, okay? A hero, okay? The hero has emerged, okay? Because uh, he saved her when she hurt her ankle, okay? And that, that was nice of him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, little things, in Jane Austen, you see, little things grow into bigger things, okay? Little things turn uh, the heel of life. <laughs> Okay, so be careful, okay? Even if you hurt your ankle, it could be the, the turning part of your life, okay? So careful. Okay, so Eleanor is different, okay? Ellen, Eleanor represents good sense, uh, logic, the governance of reason, okay? Calmness, good judgment, okay? Not feelings, okay? Uh, so this is what uh, Father Renier says about, um, uh, about Eleanor, in a sense. He says, good sense chooses the steady partner over the handsome flirt. The person who is faithful over the one who makes your heart tingle, okay? Um, he says, sense, typified in Eleanor Dashwood, chooses what the mind says is reasonable in spite of feelings. Okay, it's able to rise above feeling it's not guided, it's not navigated by feeling. Okay, that thrust of emotion, okay? And that's interesting, okay? So this is what sense. And this is the way, I mean, this is the way Eleanor behaves, mo you know, mo 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 mostly, okay? Uh, she's a strong character. She was stronger alone, uh, Jane Austen says. And her good sense so well supported her. Okay, she, strength, endurance, uh, capability. Now, in the film, um, Edward, okay, the one Mary, uh, Eleanor kind of is attracted to and I suppose falls in love with and well, in, falls in love with in a kind of a different way, in a more reserved way, in a concealed way, in a way she doesn't really openly uh, display, uh, is played by Hugh Grant, okay? Yeah. Now, he's quite handsome, okay? But, the, uh, okay, now in, in, okay, the girls agree, okay, okay. In, um, 
in the in the novel, I don't think it's that way, okay? He's not really that attractive. He's not dashing and handsome and a big knight and hero, okay? He's actually plain. And his personality is very plain. He's really not the light of the party, okay? But Eleanor kind of reasons her way into a relationship with him, okay? And they get attached to each other in some way. But it's not, it's nothing's ever said. It's never, it's never admitted, okay? It's never admitted. So that's the whole thing, okay? So there's kind of wall there at the same time, okay? And the drama builds up in the whole book because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what Edward thinks. We don't always know, perhaps, what, 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 what Eleanor is, is thinking either, okay? So why, why was she attracted to, to, um, to uh, Edward, okay? His mind is well informed. His enjoyment of books, exceedingly great. His imagination, lively. His observation, just and correct. And his taste, delicate and pure. He's a gentleman. He has fine manners. He won't overwhelm you. He won't, uh, he won't take you off your feet, OK? <laughs> but, but he's good. He's a good guy, OK? Uh, OK. And Eleanor is attracted to him, OK? And builds up an attachment to him, OK? So let's see, OK. OK, so as, as, the, as the novel unrolls, uh, it, it gets very difficult for Eleanor. Okay, she gets um, parted from um, from Edward because they, they move house, uh, and it seems he's made another acquaintance. Uh, it seems he's in a courtship with someone else, and you know at that time they sometimes got secretly engaged. Okay, and that's what happens in the novel. Okay, uh, Eleanor, Eleanor's heart gets broken. Okay, it's where her, her sense, her capability, her control, her governance comes under testing, okay, by far, you could say, okay? So this is Marianne kind of giving out, scolding Eleanor, okay? The younger sister, she says, always resignation and acceptance, always prudence and honor and duty. Eleanor, where is your heart? <laughs> okay, how do you feel? <laughs> What's going on? within you, okay? It's Marianne's way of coming at it, okay? So it's, it's a criticism, it's a critical judgment of, um, of Eleanor. It's a bit unfair, but at the same time, there is some truth in it, okay? Uh, at the same time, okay? Um, and yet, you know, Eleanor is very deep. She's like a deep water. She's very deep, you know? She, she dreams deeply, she, she thinks deeply. She, she, she wishes deeply, okay? So even when all was lost, uh, Eleanor was still kind of keeping the flame of hope alive, okay? She says, to wish was to hope, and to hope was to expect, okay? That's, that's Jane Austen's comment on maybe Eleanor's heart, okay? Um, again, this is Marianne, okay? Again, it's a different thing. It's more of Marianne, okay? It's a different kind of way of approaching the, the lover or the... The, 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 the emotional kind of flirtation or, 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 or character, okay? She says of, uh, I don't know who she says this of, but she, he, he admires as a lover, not as a connoisseur. To satisfy me, those characters must be united. I could not be happy with a man whose taste did not, in every point, coincide with my own. He must enter into all my feelings, the same books, the same music, must charm us both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not the, the settling or the, um, the reasonable approach of Eleanor. <laughs> okay, that's the point, okay? Um, go to the next one. No, where, where is the next one? Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is what happens with Eleanor. She, I mean, her heart is broken. Uh, and then at a, a certain stage, you know, in, in the film and in the novel, she opens up to, to Marianne, okay? We, we really see what's happening with uh, how broken, uh, how, how hurt uh, Eleanor is, okay, when, when Edward seems to be, be not there for her, will, will, not, will, not, will not be, you know, proposing to her, or there will be nothing more than a friendship or some kind of acquaintance, and maybe not even that, okay? <sighs> she says to Marianne in her brokenness, she says, what do you know of my heart? What do you know of anything but your own suffering? Because um, Marianne's romantic thing doesn't work out, okay? Um, for weeks, Marianne, 
I've had this pressing on me without being at liberty to speak of it to a single creature. It was forced on me by the very person whose prior claims ruined all my hope. I have endured her exultations again and again, whilst knowing myself to be divided from Edward forever. Believe me, Marianne, had I not been bound to silence, I could have provided proof enough of a broken heart, even for you. Okay, so it's, it's the torment that Eleanor has been through, uh, because one of her acquaintances, a girl acquaintances, um, I can't remember the story exactly. She's, she's, she's more or less engaged to Edward, okay? Edward her, her and herself are a sure thing. And she's confided this to Eleanor, doesn't know of Eleanor's attraction, Eleanor's um, uh, dream. And uh, so Mary, our, Eleanor has to keep silence about this. Uh, so she's keeping silent about something that's breaking her internally, okay? Uh, it's very different to, I suppose this is uh, Eleanor and Mary, I will be calm. I will be mistress of myself, okay? That's earlier, okay? So it's, it's, it's very different to that, okay? Um, so wh what are we learning uh, about the two characters, okay? We're learning that um, Marianne's overwhelming, gushing feelings actually deceive her, okay? Mr. Willoughby does not turn out to be the gentleman uh, that uh, she had thought him to be, okay? Uh, who she could not see, <laughs> okay? <laughs> he turned to be completely opposite, okay? I won't tell you the whole story because it, it does turn on a, in a good way, okay? Um, Eleanor, despite all her governance, all her serenity, her calmness, we do see she does have a heart, <laughs> okay? But the heart is broken. She does have feelings, okay? Uh, and, um, you know, she's more rounded, we could say than perhaps you know she 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 we we thought at the beginning okay okay so let's go down just um okay so i can't tell you the whole story i'm not going to ruin it for you. if you haven't seen the the film if you haven't seen the film or if you haven't read the novel you know just go do it okay uh <laughs> I, i'm not i'm not telling you the whole thing there's lots of twists and turns <laughs> typical uh jane austen things okay which are good and there's a happy ending okay but uh what do we learn about love uh, from the two characters? Okay, this is what Father Renier says. And I think it's a good kind of, uh, uh, um, kind of summing up of this. He, he says, in the end, neither sense nor sensibility is enough. We can't simply reason our way into loving someone. And neither is it healthy to chase every emotional attraction with no further thought, okay? Marianne, okay? Um, Eleanor and Marianne learned the lesson that neither extreme, that either extreme will limit love and eventually kill it. Uh, there is no method. Uh, love contains both sense and sensibility. Um, both the spark of romance and the reasonable, fateful commitment that carries a couple through hard times. So that's Father Renier's kind of conclusion. That's his interpretation of the novel. I think it's fairly true enough. You know, it's, it's, it, I'm sure it's close enough to the mark, okay? That, um, that and it's certainly true that, that, you know, Jane Austen does deliberately put the two out there, okay? Uh, as, uh, as, you know, characterizations of, of women. 18th century, you're moving into the Romantic era, uh, Jane Austen is writing romantic novels for people who are fascinated by romance in a very cultured, uh, formal time. <laughs> okay, uh, so she's she's exploring the themes. You know, uh, where where do we go with this? Okay, I think that's it. Have a, have a look. Yeah, that's it. Okay, go go back. Yeah, go back to the last one. Okay, so um, any questions or thoughts on it? So we get. Maybe some discussion, if you can, if you, if you think, yeah. Does it make sense? sense yeah. Go ahead, El or, uh, Ellen, yeah. Where do you think is the steady kind of balance or the kind of fine line as such between sense and sensibility? <laughs> Where's the good? 
Okay. Did you hear that? So where, where's, the, where's the fine line? Where's the delicate balance between sense and sensibility? Um, okay, this, this might sound unromantic, but your head should rule your heart. <laughs> okay. Um, not to the extent that you suppress every feeling. Okay, say, for example, if you're dating some guy, if you're a girl, okay, you're dating some guy, there's no real feeling, you're not attracted to him, but he's, he's, he's got a good job, he's reasonable, his family seem nice, but you don't find him attractive. You have to kind of explore that a bit, <laughs> okay? Again, the other one is, is typical, that we meet seven, after seven days, we're completely in love, we're completely infatuated with each other, okay? That's sensibility, okay? There, I, I don't know if there, there, there is a balance, uh, the, but your head, your reason must have a priority. Your good sense, your judgment can't just be left behind. Uh, at the same time, if you're compatible with someone, uh, if there is a good relationship, it's, it's not unusual that the, the emotions t intensify. Okay, and that's not wrong. Uh, that makes it very amorous. It makes it very enjoyable. Uh, it makes it great fun. Uh, but uh, those emotions will, will, will calm down at some stage. You have to, they, may, they, they, they can't be the substance of your relationship. And that's the best I can do for the moment. Yeah, go ahead, Ifea. Um, are you meant to be like, like Jim Keith, are you meant to be like, even if you do love the person, are you meant to be kind of feeling like, like this really like joyful happiness all the time? No, that joy. Yeah, like there, can, there can be a period of that. There is, there is a time for that, yeah. There is time for great joy. Is it okay to feel kind of like that? Like, sorry, like, you know that, yeah, I don't know if it's like love or passion, you know? Yeah, yeah, I so think. How do you can tell the difference? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to know. How is love or passion? Yeah, it's a good question, okay. Um, I, I, think, I think it's normal for us. I think most of us will go through that in our life at some stage, okay? Yeah. That we'll fall in love or become amorous with someone, you know? Uh, and there is a joy, there is an exultation in it, okay? And we, we have to live that, you know? They say, um, uh, love makes time pass, <laughs> okay? That's an <laughs> Italian proverb, okay? Um, but it, I suppose the, the only kind of thing I'd be saying here, be careful. Okay, you, you can't marry someone on the basis of your emotions. You have to be able to reason through. You have to be able to tick all the boxes. And al although your emotions may be ardent, they may be very strong, there may be a few boxes in the other person's character, their background, where they're living, what they, what they like. You may not be able to tick those boxes. And that's your reason telling you there are, there are holes here. Okay, no matter how strong your emotions are. And you, you need to be able to almost do that checklist. And you're doing the checklist. I mean, it, it sounds a bit commercial, but you're, you're doing that if you're dating someone. You're going through. Are, 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 are the features here, the elements here for a strong and less uh, lasting covenanted relationship, which is marriage? Or are they not? Your emotions won't tell you that. No, I mean, contemporary culture does say if you have the feelings, you have the strength of feeling, it's okay. And once they're mutual, once they're reciprocated, and whatever goes, you know, with, with that. But that's not really true. Okay, there's too much brokenness in the world to say that's true, okay? Uh, and lovers on a romantic level, they tend to be very cruel to each other. It's very different to covenanted marriage. You can't be cruel, in, 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 you know, once you make that commitment, you know. Um, anyone else? Any thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I would have a little response to that second thing, that the reason why emotions um, have to be below their reasonability is that yeah. emotions themselves, based on how we know human biology, are ne they never guarantee a stable basis anything right yeah, yeah so yes we do have to be absolutely reasonable with everything first mm. but 
in the same time, yeah, we, we can't just suppress the emotions. It's nice. We feel some emotions, that's nice. We feel some more, great. Mm. We can feel lots of emotions under being reasonable, still. Mm. So having that in mind, that there is a priority, is good. But feeling emotions is still nice, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So don't worry about it. It's nice to have passionate love. And you can still have it together with being reasonable. There is no problem having them together. Yeah. Yes. And when they go together, it can be very good. Yeah. And the emotions themselves are not they're not morally good or evil in themselves, okay? They only become good or evil depending on the context. If you have very strong emotions for someone who is already married, those emotions are inappropriate. Do you understand? If you express them privately to that person, it's wrong. Do you understand? That's how, you know, you know. But if it's someone who's not attached and is also reciprocates interest, it's okay, it's fine. You know, that, that, that's, that's the morality depends on the context uh, of them. Anything else? Anyone else? Any thoughts on it? How does it apply to today? Does it apply? I mean... Yes. Is it only about girls? I don't know. I mean... I'm, I'm told that men like Jane Austen as well, you know? <laughs> what can you learn from it? I find interesting the fact that it's more... How can I explain it? It seems that the sister that was 16 yeah. was very eager to show whereas um, Eleanor had the problems again. Yeah. I find it interesting that it's mainly focused on, on the outside, how we show what we have inside. Yeah. Because of course the two of them were feeling kind of the same. Yeah. But it was the way they expressed it. Yeah. So... I find that nowadays it's true, it's mainly focused on emotions, but it's not only the fact that they have emotions, but it's what they do with them. I'm, I'm just repeating after yourself. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I just find that, that it's interesting seeing that it's the way they show it, rather yeah. than exact what they were feeling. Yeah. Just that. Nothing major. <laughs> yeah, it, but it, it is a different kind of society, Renata. You know, the, the well, early, well, 18th century, late 18th century, that Jane Austen's really, it's very, um, it's changing, but it, it's, it's a very different society to us, you know, uh, where we're, we're kind of emotions first, and you're authentic if you feel very strongly or you're very open about your emotions, you know? Yeah, you go ahead. Of that there is no future. Yeah. As in, if I feel it right now, I have to show it right now. Yeah. And and Eleanor was planning a future. Yeah. So right now people don't believe in marriage. Well, not all of the human beings, but generally speaking. Yeah. So that's the main reason. If you don't have a base for yeah. what do I want for my future? Yeah. You're going to act here now. Yeah. Because there's no consequences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's the danger of it, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely very relevant to today because, um, I, and you've said this before, Father, as well, like about, um, you know, relationships, you have to kind of look, are they objectively good mm. for the two people? And I suppose now, you know, because there's kind of so much emphasis on, you know, go with your feelings, um, and like even when it comes to say if we see or hear about like relationships that are unhealthy and we see maybe the two people they keep going back to each other mm. um, even though you know like other people you know they've confided in can clearly see that you know it's not objectively good but they keep going back because of those strong emotions mm. not because of, of the logic so I suppose it's kind of a lesson maybe especially to, to us girls, kind of, um, you know, to try and 
like with men as well, but um, maybe girls are a bit more prone to kind of going with their emotions um, as opposed to actually thinking logically and, you know, making decisions based on kind of, you know, the objective, like is this objectively good, mm. you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to just kind of all going with the emotions. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's from Wojtyla, really. It's, I mean, there's a lot of sympathy between Wojtyla, John Paul II, and Jane Austen, really, because they, they talk about a different language, different culture, but he's talking about, when he talks about the objective profile of love, he's talking about what? He's talking about sense, really, yeah. That's, yeah, so, um, yeah. But it's just so unromantic to talk about your, your objective <laughs> love, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's your reason. Uh, tip, uh, t tapping into it, judging it. Yeah, yeah and it has, to, it has to be guided that way, you know? Because I think it's, maybe it's easy for us to see it's like people who aren't in the relationship. We, we're kind of thinking, you know, like, how, how keep, come she keeps or he keeps going back to, you know, him yeah. or her. Like, clearly yeah. there's a lot, you know, we kind of see it, but then... It's easy to say when you're not in the relationship. It's easy yeah. to see when you're object, like you're looking at it through an objective lens. Yeah. Whereas if you're caught up in the middle, you know, you're caught up in the emotions and that's subjective. Yeah. And I, at the other level, I would say, and I think reading the theology of the body of John Paul II, like he does say that throughout marriage there will be expressions of love that won't be, they won't be sexual expressions, mm -hmm. but there'll be expressions, say, of affection. Uh, there'll be emotional uh, developments. So there'll be there'll be signs of emotions in a very healthy relationship. Like there will be emotions there. It won't be just wooden, you know. And uh, so just I mean, not to say that emotions have to be suppressed all the time. <laughs> just just they're integrated. I mean, it's trying to integrate sense and sensibility. That's the whole thing. It's integration is the key. You know, it's not easy. You know, uh, I don't think you know so. Anyone else? Any thoughts? One last thought. So would you say there's a sort of false dichotomy between the two? Um, if, if you're talking about, let's say you've just alluded to um, integrating sense and sensibility. So they're really, if not a duality, the same way the title suggests. Uh, and the, the same way the two sisters in their different personalities might suggest. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe you're talking about, well, more so in Marianne, but maybe in both there's a non-integration. Right. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Certainly in Marianne, you know. Um, um, yeah. I, I, I don't know, is, 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 is in Eleanor a very reserved, non-emotional non-expressive love, is it actually going to work? You know, and there have been societies that have that, you know, have a non-expressive, non-emotional uh, uh, approach to love, okay? Very formal, very rigid. Uh, and perhaps that's what Jane Austen is, is getting at. She's, she's kind of criticizing that just a little bit, okay? Just saying, okay, that, that, that uh, and at the same time, she's not foolish. She doesn't believe in sensibility. <laughs> unbridled sensibility, you know? And Jane, that's, well, it's an actress, but that's meant to be Jane Austen, but she, <laughs> she, she did fall, she was disappointed in love herself. She knew, she, what she was writing about, she understood. And it was true formal arrangements with marriage that the, the person she fell in love with wasn't suitable. I think the, the family objected, they were, they were parted, you know? So she, she had all the heartbreak and she, she lived it as well, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's not a dichotomy. <laughs> you're trying to get both. I think that's the Catholic, the Catholic approach, is you, you're trying to get it all. <laughs> it's never just one aspect. And that's very difficult. Yeah, that's very difficult, okay. Okay, we live there, okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs>